to wash or not to wash? It's a great question, and there are so many different answers. Let me help see if I can clarify some of those for you all. Are you ready? Let's get started. Well, well, welcome back, everybody. My name is Rob Appel from Stitch in Heaven out in Quitman, Texas, a little show we call So Well right here on YouTube. And that's right, today we are going to discuss a huge question with so many answers. Should we or should we not pre-wash our fabrics? And folks, ah, there's so many different ways to conquer this, but let's try to stay, <laughs> listen to me talk, let's try to stay focused today, right? We first need to be responsible to know what kind of fibers we're really using. So today we're going to be talking all about cotton. And if you stick with me, at the end of today's video, I'll show you a quick and cool little test on ways that you can double check to confirm that you're dealing with 100% cotton fabric yourselves. So we're diving in. This conversation's all about cotton and should we or should we not pre-wash those fabrics? And folks, it's not about the cotton at all. It's about the end use. What are you going to do with your fantastic fabrics? So let me break this down in my hierarchy of knowledge for you as we get started in the most concise way possible. You notice I have some garments over here on the wall. Whether it's something that I've purchased and I'm going to embroider on or something that I am making myself, I am 100% always going to wash my fabric or my garment before I start sewing on it, adding any new threads, any new embellishments, anything like that, or creating the garment itself. So if it's something I'm gonna wear and it's something that needs to fit and it's something that needs to drape and hang right, 100% of the time, always we pre-wash our fabrics. Got it? Okay, that's easy. Now let's go into our quilting and crafting world. And I say crafting because even though I have all of this beautiful fabric bought for quilting primarily, there are different ways I use it in quilting and crafting. I've been working on this awesome rug, right? And yes, I have a tutorial coming for you all soon. Let me just step aside with this because it is quite large at the moment <laughs> and it's getting even bigger. That's what we're waiting on the tutorial for all of you. At any rate, um, something like that, it wouldn't matter if the fabric was or was not pre-washed because once that object is made, it is never going to be washed again in a washer or dryer. We're not going to be adding heat. We might be spot cleaning it. We might even be like, well, I said uh, steam cleaning it with a machine, but we're not going to put it in a situation where it's going to ever really shrink. And that's the major reason we discuss should we or should we not pre-wash our fabrics. It's all about the shrinkage, folks. It's all about the shrinkage, right? And sometimes we really want that to work for us. And other times it's the last thing we would want, again, like in garment sewing. So I've got a few samples on the table today. I'm going to quickly walk you through some examples of, of quilts that I've had for several years that I can guarantee have been washed, a couple that have been made recently that have not been washed yet, may never get washed, and like I said, I'll show you how to test your fabrics at the end. And we also should consider uh, color fastness. But when I'm thinking about washing my fabrics, it's more for how the project's going to be used versus um, is the fabrics, the blue and the white fabrics, going to run into each other? Are the reds and the blues stable fabrics? And I will do a video for all of you in the future. If you would like, let me know in the comments below. Um, there are products like Centhropol and Retain. These products are designed to either help you retain the fabric color before you get started sewing with it, or if you've had a little bleeding boot boo-boo, you could use something like Centhropol. And we often carry stuff like this at Stitch in Heaven. Uh, if we don't have it in stock, send us an email and we'll get it for you. Um, so that's why these are out here. There's always repair agents and things, but the best way, again, is to buy high quality fabrics that you know um, are well made. And if you're concerned about color bleeding, then of course you probably just want to pre-wash your fabric. For me, I'm kind of a get going. I'm a big collector of fabrics. You can see I've got a giant pile over here of different fabrics. None of my fabrics are pre-washed. A lot of them are gonna have a fairly heavy crease and fold in them. They're also folded and stored in different fabric bins and different drawers. So I'm often having to pre-iron them uh, before I use them. But folks, let me let you in on a secret. 
if you pre-wash your fabrics, you're going to need to iron them when they come out of the dryer. You most likely you'll fold them anyways, which means you'll probably then iron them again before you put them under the rotary cutter. And I always do. I always iron my fabrics before I start cutting with a rotary cutter because I really only want one fold at the most in my fabric, something nice and crisp. I don't want any extra wrinkles or folds in my fabric because that will make for an inaccurate cut with our rotary cutter, right? So for me, I also love the look of a quilt that has gotten a little bit of antiquing or look to it. So let's start there with the fabrics in these quilts and let's talk about what happened with these quilts. This is 100% cotton fabrics. This was a quilt I made quite a while ago and I did use blue against white and you can see throughout the quilt there has been no bleeding, no running. This quilt has been part of our couch <laughs> quilt uh, that our family uses constantly. It's been washed uh, at least twice that I can think of. Maybe don't look too close. It may need a washing again. Um, but what you can see here is a medium to dense layer of machine quilting stitching. The fabric, like I said, was not pre-washed. It was straight off of pre-cuts. I remember the way this was made. And um, there's a little bit of rippling around the threads cotton threads, I'm assuming this one was machine quilted on a long arm, and the density of the quilting will also affect the amount of ripple. So let me bring you another quilt quickly to show you, uh, to compare if I may. This quilt here, now this quilt is made out of 100% cotton batiks, and with the cotton batiks, those fabrics are a little bit more dense. So, and Generally speaking, they're also used and created, I should say created um, in warm countries like Bali, Indonesia, where they've been left outside to dry. They've been had salt and wax and hot waters on them already. So I kind of consider batik fabrics to be pre-washed already. So if you're concerned, like with this shirt here was made out of a wonderful batik from my friend's shop in, uh, in Hawaii. Hopefully you all recognize that, Robert and Karen. That's why I put it there, of course. Um, but anyways, I washed it to be safe, but again, it was a batik. So technically that one was pre-washed in my categories of wash fabric. So all of this batik was also pre-washed. Again, a pretty medium, getting more dense layer of the machine quilting. This one's been washed at least twice. And as I unfold it, I think you can start to really see, especially in some of this background, not only the character that's created within the stitching, um, but also the character that's created around in the background. Um, um, part of what can increase the amount of character or the shrink that comes from your fabric and not from your thread would be to use a trick where you have um, not pre-washed any of your cotton fabrics. You have like 100% cotton batting and then you use a polyester thread. Polyester should not shrink at all where the cottons could. And that's going to give you the most amount of ripple, the most amount of draw up. Almost all of these quilts, and I, could, I probably should just say, I, I can guarantee except for one of these quilts, uh, it's Hobbs 80-20 batting in it. It's what I always use. So it has 80% cotton, 20% polyester. But most of the reason, again, for pre-washing, this is a pre-washing conversation for me, is what will happen when I quilt with my fabrics when I then I've washed them later. So this, again, is a quilt that's been washed. It probably could use it again. And I absolutely love it. And you can see that it's got that character we're looking for in a utility quilt, okay? Speaking of utility quilt, and we'll come back to these, but let's jump a little forward here, right? This is not a utility quilt, folks. This is what I consider a show quilt, and it also has some raw edge applique. Raw edge applique is another giant variable to why you may want to or not want to pre-wash your fabrics, because with a pre, excuse me, with a raw edge applique like you see here, you're not gonna really want to machine wash that project unless you take the time to satin stitch around all of the outside edges because the appliques could fray away. So if you're using applique in your quilt projects, that brings in yet another variable. However, not all, all appliques are created the same. So this one being raw edge, and I did a straight line free motion machine quilting to my best, notice that, to my best, around the letters. So all we have to do is our best, right? Around the letters and around the machines and some of these spaces like inside of this really detailed little patchwork. If I wash that, I probably would start to ravel and be kind of unsightly, right? 
So this quilt here was made for me as a gift. I love this quilt. Um, and this has a fun little applique on it of a patchwork woody that's very special to me with a surfboard. Uh, thank you again. I hope you're watching the show today, Sean. And so anyways, this was done like our old fashioned sunbonnet too. So there was a layer of like an interfacing that was stitched on the underside. I'm hoping you can kind of see that. And with that here, it actually has taken away the raw edgeness of the applique portion of this quilt. So this fabric, this quilt becomes 100% washable by machine and dryer again. This also happens to have some flannel on the back. And this is another great example because it also will show you here in the trees, there's no machine stitching and just a little bit of um, some echo quilting and some stippling in the background behind the trees. And I've used this quilt for years. It's been on the couch. It's because of the flannel on the back, right? Everybody fights for this quilt. And so, uh, and, and a nice way, in a nice way. So at any rate, you can see how lovely um, that holds up. And so again, that's another reason we're taught to quilt, but we want to be quilting with some forms of density, but we don't have to get incredibly dense in our quilting. We just want it to be able to hold together. So these trees have lasted beautifully without any stitching on the trees, just up next to the trees. And that adds to the way that this artist put this quilt together for me. Um, and also adds to the way that it has washed up over time. This is the one I can say that I don't know what batting is inside of it. I apologize. And I don't know if the fabrics were pre-washed, but I can tell you, I know a lot of the fabrics are batik in them, so it probably was pre-washed and it's behaving like it was pre-washed, especially the flannel. And folks, that's another thing I wanna mention real quickly here in the last few minutes before we wrap up today's video. If you're using flannel, again, flannel is going to shrink more than your standard cotton. Your standard cotton is gonna shrink more than your batiks. So therefore, again, I think I'm gonna say if I'm using flannel, I'm a 100% always gonna pre-wash my flannel as well. Unless I want an incredible rowdy amount of pucker after the washing. All right, let's move some of the, through some of these quilts a little quicker before uh, I lose your attention span altogether. This is a quilt I made a long time ago. It's a fun one. Um, I just wanted to show you, it's got some very dense quilting in it. This one, again, unwashed fabrics, and then it's been washed a few times in, it's a utility quilt, and it doesn't have a lot of loft. It doesn't have a lot of pucker. I don't think you can see much of that on the back at all. So it's hanging nice. I could still display this in a quilt show. That's part of the quilt or the show quiltness of it is it's a little bit more all over in its stitching, um, tells a little bit of a story in its stitching. So at any rate, those were all of my pre-washed or my, my, my quilts that have been washed, I was trying to say, excuse me, quilts that have been washed. Now here, hopefully you've seen this wonderful summer camp project we just did recently from Charisma Horton. This quilt here, you can start to see some of the stitching within it, right? But all of the fabrics were straight off of the bolt and I made them while driving up to Charisma's house. Uh, we have a, a blended batting inside of this as well. I know the backing was not washed. I know the topping was not washed. So when I pre, when I wash this one, after using it for a while, hopefully you'll be able to see more of the outline of the Sasquatch and the pine trees and the actual Bigfoot machine quilting and all of that that happened on this quilt. And that was part of the technique. Again, not washing the fabrics first so that they will react more later now that they're all bound together. That's where that additional real fun pucker and everything's gonna come from, right? And last but not least, maybe a little bit hard to see, but this is a quilt um, that I've done again and recently that has some very, very dense machine quilting and just some straight line quilting. And I really like some of these straight line quilting, whether it's done on a long arm or domestic, because by doing a bit of the straight line quilting, it seems to cause the fabric itself to just shift a little. And there's techniques about going up one row and down the other that I was using and things like that. But you can hopefully see this is basically fresh off of the long arm and it has a little bit of character already. This is made um, from standard uh, cottons, not batiks. Here, this is the Dupree Di Dupree's diamond quilt. I'll open it up real quick so you can see some of that stitching hopefully. And um, again, this will wash wonderfully when I ever wash it. I was not 
concerned because I'm using 100% fantastic cotton. This happens to be Benertex with my dark blue against my whites. I have uh, some reds against some dark blues, some blues against some yellows. I, again, am not concerned about any of that because I always buy the top quality fabrics. So again, I feel like I just raced through a bunch of that info, but I certainly hoped it helped you. We'll give you a quick review as we're wrapping it up today. And if you're still here, I'll show you in just a second that way that you test to make sure that your fabric was also 100% cotton so that all of this other information will pertain. So again, if it is going to be used in a garment, if it is a garment you're going to use, or if it is flannel, we added one, we added one, it's flannel. Yes, 100%, I'm going to pre-wash that fabric or that garment before I start doing my magic to it because I just don't want it to shrink anymore later. Conversely, I use those tricks when I'm making quilts. If I want extra shrink, I do not wash the fabric first, and I use a high level of cotton batting, meaning 100% to 80% cotton batting and a polyester thread so that I can get as much shrink out of the quilt once it, once it is finished and bound and everything. If I'm concerned about the quilt shrinking, if I'm concerned about the color fastness of any of my fabrics, then of course I'm gonna put those fabrics in the washer and in the dryer. I'm gonna iron them when they come out and prepare them for quilting just like they were off the bolt, which happens to be my preference. But again, understanding where the fabric's gonna go will help you know how to treat your fabrics right. And don't forget, folks, if you didn't pre-wash it and you decide to use it for a garment, you can always toss it in the wash. And maybe I should mention as a disclaimer at the beginning of the video, I never pre-wash pre-cuts. They're too small. It'll be a disaster. All the work's been done for you folks. If you're a pre-cut fan, if you love those bundles of fabric, never toss those in the wash. I'll get in so much trouble for even alluding to that. So anyways, hope that helped you folks. And I'll be right back with the tools we need to test to see if this is really a cotton quilt or not. Be right back. All right, and we are back here, folks, with exactly what we are going to need today to figure out if that fabric's really cotton or not. Well, let's get ourselves a pair of tweezers as well so we don't uh, burn ourselves too badly. And if you've got tweezers that will lock down, I don't know, maybe you found them in your parents' drawers from the 60s or something like that. 